North Korea's Foreign Minister Ri Yon Ho slammed U.S. President Donald Trump and escalated the war of words between the two countries. We cannot abide by an agreement if it provides cover for the eventual construction of a nuclear program. The Iran deal was one of the worst and most one-sided transactions the United States has ever entered into. Frankly, that deal is an embarrassment to the United States, and I don't think you've heard the last of it. Believe me. Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Our national nuclear force is to all intents and purposes a war deterrent for putting an end to the nuclear threat of the U.S. and for preventing its military invasion. Our ultimate goal is to establish the balance of power with the U.S. In a speech on Saturday at the UN General Assembly, Ri called his country a nuclear arms state. He also stressed that Pyongyang will continue to accelerate its nuclear and missile development. Trump referred to the North's leader Kim Jong-un as a rocket man four days earlier. Rocket man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Re lashed out on Trump's reference to the North's leader. He tried to insult the supreme dignity of my country, referring to it as a rocket. By doing so, however, he committed an irreversible mistake of making our rocket's visit to the entire U.S. mainland inevitable all the more. Ri said if the U.S. and its allies show any sign of conducting a military attack, his country will take merciless preemptive action as preventive measures. And with the world focused on the showdown with North Korea, another threat is also growing. Iran now claims to have successfully tested a new ballistic missile, missile that's capable of reaching much of the Middle East, including Israel. And it comes as Iran's president is promising to boost the country's weapons capabilities. Meanwhile, the Trump administration threatens to ditch the nuclear deal altogether in the wake of Iran's continuing provocations. And just days after President Trump accused Iran at the UN General Assembly of building dangerous missiles. It's far past time for the nations of the world to confront another reckless regime. ادبیات چاهلانه زشت و کین توزانه و مشغول از اطلاعات غلط و اتهامات بیپایه The Iran deal was one of the worst and most one-sided transactions the United States has ever entered it. حاصل بیش از دو سال مساکرات فشرده است که نتیجه آن مورد حمایت شورای امنیت سازمان ملل متحد و جامعه جهانی قرار گرفته That's why Israel's policy to regarding the nuclear deal with Iran is very simple Change it or cancel it Fix it or Nixon. نمی توان پذیرفت رژیم غاصب صهیونیستی که با سلاح هستیش منطقه و جهان را تهدید می کند و متعهد به هیچ مقررات و نظارت بین المللی نیست ملت های سول طلب را نصیحت کند Well, the president, as you know, Rebecca, has already had to recertify Iran's compliance with this deal a couple of times during the course of his young administration, though he has admittedly been very begrudging about doing this. When it's next up for recertification, what do you think 
if you're a betting person, what do you think the president's going to do? Is he going to recertify? And if he does, how is he going to sort of do it again with one hand tied behind his back? Well, this was the dilemma that was intentionally set up by the Obama administration. It made it very difficult for the following administration to um, to really have some options in dealing with Iran because um, what we want is the international community behind us. We want to, that took years of diplomatic heavy lifting to get Iran squeezed so hard that it was willing to even come to the negotiating table. Um, so it, it has a couple of options before the Trump administration. It can sort of recertify again while also noting all the problems that it sees with compliance. Um, there is great... Um, um, evidence that the Iranians are cheating on the margins, if not outright, um, and we can do that, like sort of putting them, you know, on the record and shining sunlight on what the what the Iranians are doing, and then trying to rally again international support, try to make sure that um, other companies across the world know that it's not safe or it's not uh, it's not a good investment to in, uh, to invest in Iran, and, and then try to put the squeeze on the Iranians again. Remember, Barack Obama, when he was president, he even said, even if the Iran deal works perfectly, all we did was move the breakout capability for when the Iranians could actually have a nuclear capability from three months to a, a year. Um, so the Iranians can cheat um, on the margins and then, you know, in six, seven, eight years, break out, and then they're going to have this ballistic missile capability to marry with it. Uh, so it's a very dangerous thing. The Obama administration dug a hole. It's going to take a lot to get us out of it. You know, it sounds like President Trump's got a lot of hard choices to make over the next few months. Rebecca Heinrichs, live from D.C., thanks for joining us with your insight and your expertise this afternoon. Good to be here. China's weather experts say the magnitude 3.4 earthquake that rocked North Korea today was natural and not caused by a nuclear test. It happened in the northeastern part of the country, not far from the rogue regime's nuclear test site. Meanwhile, dictator Kim Jong-un made new threats this week about testing a hydrogen bomb over the Pacific Ocean. His foreign minister delivering a fiery speech at the U.N. today, responding to President Trump's appearance at the world body. What else could be a bigger threat than the violent remarks such as pouring fire and fury, total destruction coming from the top authority of the world's biggest nuclear power? Unleashing a, a salvo, a fiery rhetoric at, from the UN General, General Assembly floor, stating that the United States would actually totally destroy North Korea if provoked and led into a war. And now we have, of course, Kim Jong un responding in kind. So, this war of words, does it do us any good to get to a place of dipl diplomatic? peaceful solutions. Yeah, I, I think so. I think we need to hit the pause button here. But first, let me say, it's nice to be with you in person, Kelly. <laughs> One of the nice things again. about UN Week is I actually get to come to New York <laughs> and come by and say hello. But I think you put your finger on something important. This is starting to feel like there are a lot of moving parts and it might get away from people. I don't yeah. think anyone's looking to uh, start a war on purpose. The, the Chairman Kim won't because he'll lose that war and lose power. But sometimes you get war even when you don't want war. And we've had steady escalation of wars and of of actions recently, even today, and, and I'm concerned about it. My, in my career, watcher friends, uh, they looked at Kim's statement. They had never seen anything like that before. And if he were to follow through on this promise, which he has personally invested in, yes, to test a uh, weapon in the Pacific, that would be a very dangerous situation. What is compelling Kim Jong Un to to take these kinds of provocative steps in the face of the world that says stop it? put it down, leave the, the nuclear arsenal alone, and develop something good for your people mm. who have been lost in poverty and human trafficking and the like. He's done nothing good for his own country except to start building up this nuclear arsenal, which yeah. can bring no good. Yeah, and devoted, uh, according to new figures, a tremendous share of his country's wealth to it. Well, there, as you might guess, with the most opaque country in the world, it's hard to really know what his intentions are. Some people have said it's defensive in nature. He really thinks the U.S. is going to come after him. And after Libya and Iraq, the only answer to that, according to this logic, is to have a nuclear weapon. Others say he wants it for bargaining. Uh, other Bargaining say, for what? Well, to get relief of sanctions or to uh, uh, be able to enter the international community without, uh, you know, on his own terms. Some others have suggested it's about maintain, ha having a sense of crisis so he maintains control over domestic population. But let me add this. That's all sort of general. In right. the particular, when you're calling me names and I'm calling you names, uh, it has been reported that the CIA briefed the president and that that briefing said that he is a 
has a big ego, is thin-skinned, and is likely to react to those sorts of statements without really thinking through his response. So there might be, you know, some an emotional element, not just a strategic element. But the president did it anyway. Yep. And he broke the mold of previous U.S. presidents in the past right. by going after Kim Jong Un. So what's the next step in terms of bringing this to a diplomatic? peaceful end, as I've asked before. Yeah. You know, my my stock answer to that would be, well, we need to open up diplomatic relations. We need to talk to him. Hold yeah, but the stock answers are gone now. Yeah, exactly. I was just about to say, right now, that's probably going to be very difficult, uh, because having personally insulted the North Korean leader, what Korean official is going to raise his hand and suggest, hey, we should be talking to I'm the U.S. To talk, right now? Yeah. So I think what we have, to, the best we can hope for is maybe a pause, let people gather themselves on all sides, and then quietly and away from the TV cameras, uh, try something behind the scenes. You know, there's a proverb that says, careless talk may ruin everything. Hopefully, we have not uh, I, come to that I point. hope so. I'm, I'm feeling more nervous than I have in a long time, but I, 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 okay. I'm hoping we can get back. Jim Walsh, good to see you in person. Good to see Always you, good to have Billy. You. Thanks for your perspective. Thank you.